Welcome to the Sisterhood of Sweat. I am here today with my good friend, Kelly Tyen. How can I feel more free? And just this whole thing about, you know, our dreams are not canceled. God is in charge. Hi, I'm Linda Mitchell, 54-year-old elite obstacle racer, award-winning fitness competitor, gym owner, and author. Welcome to the Sisterhood of Sweat podcast, where we will approach the difficult topics of life, interview inspiring guests, and bring empowerment to all. This community is a place where we can be who we are instead of who others want us to be. Let's get started. And now, a word from our sponsors, Essential Formulas. Now more than ever, it is important to have a healthy immune system. Many health professionals agree that probiotics are a leading natural therapy for boosting immune health. Why? Because 70% of your body's immune cells reside in the GI tract. By taking a superior probiotic daily, like Dr. O'Hara's probiotics, with their postbiotic metabolites, you can enhance your overall immune system and immune response. For additional immune support, get RegActive's immune formula to boost your glutathione levels. Since our glutathione levels go down if we feel stressed, maintaining glutathione levels is a key factor for natural defense. For a short-term immune boost, try Dr. O'Hara's Propolis Plus, which provides probiotic and immune support and includes Brazilian green propolis for superior antioxidant support and vitamin E, astaxanthin, and flax oil. Be proactive about your immune health. Ask your retailer today about Dr. O'Hara's probiotics, RegActive Immune Formula, and Dr. O'Hara's Propolis Plus today. If you want to be healthier, one of the best things you can possibly do is get at least seven hours of quality sleep every night. I know, I know, it's hard to get that much sleep. Your mind keeps you awake, you can't get comfortable, You wake up early and can't fall asleep again. There are a hundred reasons why you can't get seven hours of quality sleep every night. But listen, it's super important because your body heals itself when you sleep. And if you're not getting enough quality sleep, you're increasing your risk of disease. You're even making it harder to lose weight. Would you like to know an easy way to get more quality sleep every single night? Make sure you're getting enough magnesium. Believe it or not, around 75% of people don't have enough of it, which helps explain why so many people have sleep problems. But please do not run to the store to buy the first magnesium supplement you find. Most magnesium supplements use only the two cheapest synthetic forms. And since they're not full spectrum, they won't fix your magnesium deficiency or help you sleep better. There are actually seven unique forms of magnesium and you must get all of them if you want to experience its calming, sleep enhancing effects. That's why I recommend Magnesium Breakthrough by Bio Optimizers. Simply take two capsules before you go to bed and you'll be amazed by how much better you sleep and spring out of bed in the morning with energy, how much more rested you feel when you wake up. For an exclusive offer for my listeners, go to www.magbreakthrough.com slash sweat 10 and use code sweat 10 during checkout to save 10 percent. i am so excited for today as usual when i have an incredible guest if you didn't know i am your host kelly tyan we're going to talk about some juicy things that women go through especially if you're over 40 but my guest today this is her second time on my show So we have been friends since 2012, back in the competition days, and we stayed friends ever since. And through podcasting, we just keep connecting and through our businesses and our fitness lives, we're intertwined. And so I am really excited to introduce you to Linda Mitchell. And Linda is a leading woman's health expert, a best-selling author, fitness boutique owner, and creator of the Sisterhood of Sweat brand. After surviving domestic violence, Linda has made it her mission to empower other women by helping them take responsibility for their health so that they can become in the best shape physically and emotionally. 
She's a graduate of the Institute of Integrated Nutrition. She has worked with dozens of thought leaders, and she's been able to double and triple her income while eliminating um, debt. I mean, that right there we need to talk about. She's an award-winning fitness competitor, cover model, and host of her podcast called The Sisterhood of Sweat, which is a top 50 podcast with over 350,000 downloads. Linda has written her own column, Fit Over 40, and has spoken on numerous stages, including PodFest and Women's Future Conference and Comeback Champion. She has appeared on ABC, NBC, Bold TV, and Fox. Well, I am just honored to have you on the show today, Linda. Welcome, welcome. Well, it's always great to be with you, Kelly. And from the very first moment I met you, I just fell in love with you. And I can see why you're having so much success with everything that you're doing, like with the book that you just came out with, Addicted to the Climb, your book, your podcast, your speaking, because you truly do care about others and it shows. Oh, thanks so much. It really means the world to me. So thank you for those kind words. And thank you for being here and being part of my journey. You have been part of this journey. So yeah, I'm so excited to watch you soar. And likewise, like when, you know, when you can look back, because I was looking at your stuff because you're coming on my show tomorrow. Exciting. Yay! You guys will have to tune into that too. Uh, I was very much looking at your podcast. And I'm like, I just remember when it was an idea, we were talking about it. We were doing like the mastermind. We were talking. I was like, you need to write a book because every time I would read what you had written, like on Instagram or your blog or like your email, I'm like, you need to write a book. And here it is. You've done the process. You did the work. You have the book. You have the podcast. And I was looking back and I'm like, wow, she's, it's not no longer an idea. It's a reality. Her dreams have become a reality and she has a hundred podcasts now. It's no longer an idea. And that's what happens when you have a heartfelt God idea. Mm -hmm. It multiplies when you actually just have the faith to take the leap. Oh my gosh. Amen. And this is funny that we're talking about this and thank you so much for all that. I mean, I so appreciate you saying all that from the depths of my heart, because really today I was listening to your show and one of your shows inspired me to do my live today on Facebook about being ready and ready is a lie. So what Linda is saying, I, I was the type that I would just jump in because you're never going to be ready to start the next thing. If I waited until my book, I mean, I did wait, Linda, a few years. It took me a little bit of time, but at least I did it. And I, I don't want to go to my grave with regrets on things that I wish I had done, things I just jumped into the podcast, like you said. And you just spoke all about this on your show because I'm sure there are things that scared you to do along all these years of your career, <laughs> right? But until so we take many. this, I mean, it's amazing, but until we take the first step, you're never going to know if you're going to succeed or not. And that's okay because failure is a learned experience, no matter what. I don't even r- recognize those things as failures anymore. I'm like, okay, well, what did I learn from it? You know? even if it didn't work out. So Linda, let's dive in. I want you to tell us a little bit about your story and how you got to where you are today, because I know it's been a rough road for you. And I want to touch upon the part where you survived domestic violence, if you're open to talking about that. And then- to the powerhouse women that you have become and you just keep on climbing. And so it's exciting. And I want you to explain to my listeners all about your journey. Well, I'm going to back up before I talk about that and just go back to what you said about failure, because the older I get, the more I recognize that it isn't failure. It's only lessons learned on 
how to proceed forward or how not to do something and how to do it better the next time. Mm -hmm. And when, when we are afraid of failing, you almost draw it to yourself when you're, when you're fearing failure, but I would just say, embrace, embrace your failures because they're only stepping stones to your greatest dreams. And when you have something that doesn't work out and it, I believe in God and I know you're all faith-based. Mm -hmm. So it's really, truly God's redirection because he has something better for you. And maybe you're going to miss it over here. And maybe it's not the time yet. All the elements are not there. And so if you can look back over your life and you could connect the dots, and, and this is something that Steve Jobs says, but I just think looking back and you look at every piece to where you are right now, you can see when God is directing your footsteps, how each of those steps connect Mm -hmm. how they have brought you to where you are in this very moment. Your life is by design. It is not by accident. Unlike what the world tells you, mm -hmm. it is by design. And I can look back at the worst things that have ever happened to me, the worst. And I can look at everything had some good, had something good that it brought me. So to my story, yes, I did survive domestic violence. It was horrific. It was a horrible. But uh, what did I get good out of it? I learned to stand up. I learned to not be intimidated and how to just move forward in my life instead of being bogged down by somebody that is trying to destroy or diminish or dim, you know, dim your light, mm -hmm. um, learning what I'm worthy of. And I think really so many lessons, like what you're worthy of dictates what you put up with and what you tolerate in your life. So when you realize what God created you for, and you know what the deal breakers are, you know that he's got you and he wants the best for you. Mm -hmm. You just have to trust and you have to take that leap. Like I had to, I had to jump out of the fire mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and he saved me. I mean, 100%, 100%. I don't know how much you guys uh, talk about God on here, but it's I'm all, just going to, yes. <laughs> You can talk God. I mean, I had a guest on the other day and I felt like I was at church. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, good. I love, I love, I love it. it. Okay. Let's bring have it, some church. Bring it today. on. Bring it on. Okay. So I will just tell this detail. It's just, uh, when I look back, um, you know, it was my ex-husband just lost it. He was a ticking time bomb because he had a lot of problems, you know, when you're raised in a violent environment, you could be, you could be violent when you grow up. So it just was a whole thing and I wish him well, but he was, he was strangling me mm -hmm. and uh, smothering me mm -hmm. under pillows and he was on top of me and he was 220 pounds and six foot four and angry with him was not a good thing. And it was just one night before we went to bed. He just, it was nothing. Like it was, I was terrified at bedtime for a long time after that. Um, we were just having a discussion of, uh, about babysitting the next day. And he just snapped. Like they said it was transference um, because he had animosity towards his own mother. So something I said triggered something from childhood. And so I found myself not knowing if I was going to live to the next moment, not knowing if I was going to get another breath, not knowing if I was going to be able to call on the name of the Lord while there was still time. Like, was there going to be any time left for me to call on the name of the Lord? That was my last thought before he um, 
I just got a, a like a break. Like I said, that I got a breath and I said the name of Jesus. And there's power in that name because it woke him up to what he was doing. And I literally took that opportunity to break away. And I ran downstairs. I was afraid to go outside. I was afraid to, to tell anyone, but I locked myself in the bathroom and I literally was shaking. I could hear him upstairs, still screaming. He came downstairs. He ripped the phone out of the wall. And in that moment, I needed someone to rescue me. Mm -hmm. I needed to be rescued. I was being victimized. I needed, I needed God. And I literally was looking at my hands. They were shaking. I didn't even recognize myself. I didn't even recognize who I was in that moment. So I think we all have moments where we have to face like our giants. And that was pretty real. That was pretty real. Uh, that was like a life and death experience. And in that moment, I knew I wanted to live and that I had a lot to live for. And I did not want to go down that way. And so I think like it changed me ever since in just the way that I live, because it could have very well been over that night. Oh, yes. I mean, I have chills just listening to this. And I'm hearing how you surrendered though that word is popping up in my head because it seems you surrender to God and I I do I tell my women that in my bible study groups in my faith groups if you're in a struggle just know if you surrender like Linda like surrender it to God and he will get you to the other side of it he will he makes so many promises in that bible that he's not leaving you he's not going to leave you if you open up and surrender to him and that's exactly what you did Linda you called his name and just said it out loud and look what happened and but you also took the steps yourself like you made a choice yourself that I'm not going to let this happen anymore. I am going to take action because, you know, we can pray all day, but we also have to take action as well. Right. I mean, yes. And I think, uh, being raised in church and as a Christian mm -hmm. that I had mixed messaging on what we were supposed to endure in a marriage. And I just want to say that God does not expect anyone to live that way. And when I realized that and that it was going to start, turn, it started turning towards my children, I was out of there, but I wanted to work at the marriage. I, you know, I made this commitment before God and everyone in church. And I, I was just, uh, but I want to say that. I had some misconceptions about what God expects of us. And I just remember praying and just, I remember saying to God, I just can't take it anymore. And I believe you hear the voice of God and I heard the voice of God. You're right. You can't get out. Mm -hmm. And I did, I did get out and I, my life has been better ever since. It's only went up, 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 up. <laughs> She's on the climb. She is on the climb. She has been climbing since. <laughs> so Linda, did when you were getting out of that relationship and maybe taking that first step, I'm sure you had so many mixed emotions going through divorce and shame and fear and the unknown. Did fitness at that point play a role in how it healed you because how did fitness come into play in this whole big brand coming out of that? So that kind of goes back away. So my mom suffered from manic depression when I was growing up and, you know, and she was suicidal. And so I think that all set me up for everything. If you, if you, you know, just to be truth be told, mm -hmm. not, you know, I having to be the strong one, not understanding what dysfunction or proper boundaries were. And so I early at an early age, I discovered fitness. I discovered that it could lift you out of any mood and made you feel good and strong and empowered. And 
you know, as a young girl, I didn't understand my mom's illness, but I knew I didn't want to be the same way. Cause you know, as a child, you're role modeling yourself after your parents. And so when I found fitness, I realized that not only was it empowering, but you could share it with others and they would be empowered. I started teaching all like the neighborhood kids how to exercise. So it started early and that it was, you know, nature's antidepressant, really. To say the least. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, that is, yes, I got strength from it, strength and empowerment. And I think belief Mm -hmm. in my abilities and confidence and all of the things that I lacked and that I needed. And so it fills that for you. And what was your first step in saying, I want to start teaching classes or how, what was the first jump you took into your actual career to where you are today? My first jump, I just remember like what my first wish was when I went to this gym, I was 18 and I was going to be, that was before I got married. And I wanted to, of course, everybody wants to be in shape for their wedding day. Mm -hmm. I was getting married at an early age, let's say. And I just thought the gal, she was in her fifties. And she was so empowered and so strong and so independent and so fit. And I just loved everything that fitness, I thought, brought me. And uh, I thought, I really want to, I want to do something like that. I want, you know, I remember wishing that I could own a studio because I used to do this, these Susie and Leslie tapes and Jane Fonda and all these people. And I, they had a studio in Beverly Hills and Joni Gregans. I would laugh and I would practice like her routines. And I just remember thinking, I, I want to do something like that. Maybe someday, like I could do something like that. Maybe I could own a studio like they do in Beverly Hills. And I wish I could do this all day long is what I thought. And so the opportunity came when I was in why not, my not North Dakota um, wow. on an air base. I was going to uh, a, a place and it was my first workout and I had just had a baby. And they said, I, like, I thought my stomach muscles had died and went to heaven because the workout was so hard, <laughs> but I just did my best. And I came back the next time ready to go at it again. And the instructor came up to me and said, Hey, uh, I was watching you. Would you be interested in taking over my class when I move in six months? Wow. Talk about manifesting your dream, right? <laughs> you were wishing and saying it and, and, and that's incredible. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. And so I actually started not as I envisioned. I started, I was pregnant with my second child. I started as the pregnant instructor. So, uh, but it was fine. It was fine. It was great. I've done it ever since. And it has evolved and evolved to um, where it is now. And I remember again, when I had went through what I did, And I was working at the YWCA, which God had his plan for me. It was the perfect place. I had the panic button I could push if my ex came to bother me. There was a women's shelter. There was everything. And I was helping with abused children and battered women. And as part of like my fitness director, I would, I would teach them and get to see how that empowered them. And I remember they were all sitting around the circle one day and they were telling their stories. And I thought, wow, I really, I see they're sitting in their story. They're living in their story. They're, they're not moving on. And I don't want to live in my story. I want to make a new story. I love that. And I want to help other people change their story. And in that moment, I remember wishing when this time was over and I was through the mess someday that I could have a place where women could come and have what they needed, which I felt like I had needed, which was a, a 
to be heard, to be seen, to have support, to have, to have that soft place to fall where people have your back. And that's what the sisterhood of sweat is. That's what it is. Sweat stands for strong women, empowering, achieving together. And God, he provided my dream, which we can get into in a little bit, but I just, I just wanted to tell you that. I love it. It's such a beautiful story of how it really did unfold, but it was a deep wish or dream, I should say, as a young little girl. And you really just, you you worked at it, Linda. I mean, you put the, the time and the effort and everything. God led you to that dream, but you really built this empire that you have right now. And I would love for you, because it sounds all glamorous and people are like, wow, good for her. But let's talk about some of the struggles of even my women that are building businesses right now to trying to even just get healthy and they're over 40. There's always struggle. I mean, you have gone through your thirties, you've gone through your forties, you hit your almost, 50. I'm almost done with 50. Oh my gosh. Are you really? I'll be 60 in September. Linda, you guys <laughs> have to see her. You have to right now press pause and go look at her Instagram. You're not going to believe what you see. So you can oh, put it in your so face. No, you, you are amazing. And I know my listeners have their ears wide open right now because we do need to dive into some of your health tips as well and fit tips. But talk to us a little bit. Maybe there's That's people right, about your, yeah, just building your business, being a mom, being, you know, all the things that you are trying to be in, climb towards that next level of your business. Your you did competitions. You've just done so much, but I'm sure there were setbacks along the way. How do you, as this woman that you are, how do you stay motivated to continue? How do you face your own struggles? And what advice do you give for women that are in it right now? Maybe they're in the struggle right now. So I would say it's really important to dial in on your why to know why and you have you know you think you know your why but you've got to like dial down like 10 layers deep you've got to ask yourself why am I doing why am I competing well why is that important to me why do I need the recognition why do I need the empowerment why do I need the confidence and where is this going you have to like ask yourself questions because otherwise you're just spinning your wheels. You really need to know what your reasoning is because your why is what drives you. It's what keeps you going when, th- when times get tough, when, you know, maybe it isn't working out in business. You thought collaboration was going to be wonderful and the person was taking advantage of you and and you have to have a difficult conversation because it isn't lining up with your vision. And then you have to, in that moment, that isn't fun. That is like, oh, geez, I thought this was raw, raw, sis, boom, ba. Let's go, girls. And you realize, oh my gosh, I've got to be like, this person's competing for my business within my business. I've got to have a difficult conversation. Um, and maybe that's not enjoyable, but. You have to think about your greater why. It's all got to go back to what your vision is Mm -hmm. and who you're serving. And that's your main thing when you're doing something like a big business or it's, it's surrounding more than you. And so it's just dialing in that why. Why are you doing what you're doing? And is this a God idea or is this just a good idea? Mm -hmm. Like I personally want to be living full out in my purpose. I want to live with all of my gifts, with what God has bestowed upon me and use it to my best abilities. And so if you're a little bit like me, Mm -hmm. then you have to really get alone. You've got to get clarity on why you're doing what you're doing. What is your vision? And don't let anybody dumb that down. Don't tell people that are small-minded. Keep it to yourself for a little bit Mm -hmm. because it's probably, if it's not crazy, if it doesn't seem crazy to you, then it's not big enough. It's not, 
It's not like that God idea because it's not going to make logical sense to you when you're coming up with that, that God idea. It's not going to make sense to your friend that can't see herself doing it. It's going to make sense though, when you just are real and you just say it out loud and you think, oh my gosh, did I say that? Who am I to say that? That's outrageous. Like, what are people going to think? She wants to speak around the world and help women with their self-confidence and self-esteem through building health. Oh, you know, I'm just saying like, it is mm-hmm. going to feel kind of crazy and scary and, and, scary scary. and all of the things, but wouldn't you rather just live your life full out going after like the scary dreams that make you feel alive, that make you tick that are your heart's desires, because you know what? God knows your heart's desires. Mm -hmm. He knows what you like. And I'm totally going to have to tell you the story about the pink purse in in, in a bit, because it, it is, I love pink and God knows I love pink. And he used this purse as I guess I'll call it like a, a sign that it was going in the right direction. But I am just going to back up for a second. And just when we were talking struggle, I built my business up for five years in a, in a place that was perfect for me because it was allowed me to make a lot of, of money without like tons of hours. I worked my schedule around my kids and my husband and in our life. And it came to a point where he probably, I would say, I learned so much there. So no, no hard feelings at all. He probably saw that, wow, she's paying an exorbitant amount of percentage, which means she's making this much, which means, man, maybe I should pay somebody this, you know, per hour. And you know, no more private contractors. So it was like New Year's Eve. I wake up to a note in my, in my email, no more private contractors. We're celebrating New Year's. You're planning dreams for the future. And my, I, my dreams are in that moment. I was thinking too small. My dreams are crushed. I'm crying. I'm, I'm upset. Where are my people going to go? I'm like, so all heart. My husband is like, trying to sleep. I just cry, cried half the night about it. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, you're going to be celebrating what you're crying about right now. And truer words were never spoken. That was the best thing that ever happened to me. That was the best thing because I would have just stayed doing what I had always done. And working for somebody else, their shingle, and pouring my blood, sweat, and tears into someone else's dream. And I don't know if that might speak to you today about where you're pouring your blood, sweat, and tears into someone else's dream. But I believe God has dreams for us and things that we're supposed to accomplish. And sometimes, just like Joel Osteen says, our trouble is completely our transportation. So that all happened. And then I began having, well, I could go over here and do what I always did with Joe Schmo, or I could do this other thing that I've been thinking about and dreaming about. And I started with one TRX on the bridge like a troll, like people were going by all my friends from the frou-frou, nice, fancy gym. It's like, what is Linda doing out here on the bridge hanging from this yellow and black strap? And it felt weird and a little awkward. And that's kind of how things start. But who would know that I would have this huge community and podcast and gym of my dreams all from going another direction. Mm. And going through the open door and forgetting about the disappointment, forgetting about the closed doors that are closed to you. Mm -hmm. And so I would just go on to say, then again, when, when it's time for change, uh, sometimes it doesn't come the way you think. Like I literally remember having my hamstring. I'm competing as a day before competition ripped from the groin. 
I remember that. <laughs> Bone fragment, you know, like the whole bit. Mm-hmm. So like, and then two more horrific injuries, just as bad. Actually, the groin injury where I ripped my, the, yeah, abductor. Uh, wait, let me say, I don't think I'm saying it right. Adductor bundle from the pelvis on the other side. So really, let me just say though, though it felt like the worst thing ever because it was like your identity. It's what you do. It's like who you think you are. I found out it was so much more than that. And that, that was, you know, I'm more than my body. You found and out where your identity lives, which is in Christ. I'm sure. Yes. It really 100%. And mm-hmm. Yes. It was, it was actually the horrific Mm-hmm. Uh, I can now count it as a blessing because it sent me in a new direction. And, you know, when you're down and out, God can show up in a greater way. So here I am. I'm flat on my back. I have probably, I hardly had any members. Like, I mean, at the small little tiny gym, I had members, but I'm just saying it was like a big gym and I'm flat on my back. I can't even do anything. I was harnessed in something to 90 degrees with my leg up behind and not allowed to work out for like four months. So not even anything. So I'm just saying here I am like that. And I remember I had probably around that time I had just prayed and I just said to God, I know I've been living, I've been playing small. I'm ready to go big. I'm ready to go bigger. I know that I've been playing small, God. I'm ready to go big. So this had all happened. My rent then tripled. My rent, like that week, tripled. And the guy came in and ran rough shot over everyone. He was rude. He was crude. He was like, you know, just it wasn't good. And I knew it in my spirit, in my heart. And I was like, no. And I remember turning to my husband and I said, we're going to have to go big or go home. Wow. And so that was the catalyst for me to go big. And my husband supported my every, my everything, my dream. Like we opened the studio of like my dreams, this fitness boutique. And then if that wasn't enough, it was effortless. Like it was effortless. Like I have worked and clawed and scraped. Let me just say like hard but this was a God idea. It was effortless. I feel like mice put up my gym, like in Cinderella, like it was. Wow. She believed she could. So she did. (laughs) It's amazing. The story is truly so inspiring though, because Linda, you have such a strong belief system in your, you know, your mindset is just I'm not giving up. I'm not giving in no matter what happens to me. I'm going to keep climbing and I'm going to take God with me. I'm going to allow him to open the doors. I mean, this is unbelievable, to, you know, for you guys listening right now, again, that word surrender keeps popping up into my mind. If you're stuck, if you don't know which way to go, surrender to God, increase your faith that he will make a way when there seems to be no way. Linda, Oh my gosh. I love it. Love it. And- love it. I mean, you're a true example of it. You followed and kept going, but she didn't quit on herself. And that's what I want you all to realize. When you quit on yourself, that's it. It is over. When you keep going and you don't give up on you, there's so much opportunity, even through the failures and the struggles. You just have to keep going. And I think that's the gist of our conversation. And that's what I want women to understand. Even let's pivot a minute into healthy lifestyles right now. People quit every day because they don't see results in a minute. Oh, I'm over 50 now. I'm not ever going to be in shape. I'm too tired. I'm too old. I'm already way too far gone. So let's talk to those women right now that really need a push to get back up, and Linda, you can speak to them right now. So that's your limited beliefs. You've got to kick those to the curb because we all have them. I remember sitting in a workshop with Isaiah Hankel. Um, I was trying to remember the name of his book. He has several books out there, but I'm sitting in this workshop and we're working on our limited beliefs. And I didn't realize how many I had because I am very positive. So right. I'm sitting there. 
And uh, as I'm hearing people's beliefs and you had to write all your beliefs down, I was like, wow, like everybody has the same feelings and thoughts I have. So it's like, Mm -hmm. not like uncommon for people to have these quirky, limited beliefs such as, oh man, she's rich. That's why she can do that. Or she's, um, she's so fit and she's always been fit. And, or I'm so far out of the box. I'm, I'm 40 pounds overweight. There's no way I could ever do X, Y, and Z. It's really about the stories in your head that you're telling yourself. It's not about the actuality of what you're capable of. I mean, I'm going to be 60. Like, uh, if I would have listened to all the naysayers, of course, first of all, it would be, oh, you'll never make it as a single mom with two kids and no education. Wrong. Or... You're, you're too old to compete. Someone told me, you know, when I was 40 um, and then recently someone was telling me all these things that, you know, oh my gosh, over the age of 40, you can't do this. You can't do that. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. And I'm like, oh gosh, that would have been my whole fitness career (laughs) if I would have listened to that. Right. So like, you can't listen to, first of all, the stories you're telling yourself, you got to change them. You got to think about what do you want? Mm -hmm. What do you want? And then I just really believe in asking, asking and receiving, because I know that sounds basic and simple, but that is the way that I have received everything is asking. Mm -hmm. And I ask God, like, you know, when I want something, he, he cares about our desires. He cares about our dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when you realize that and you start realizing that, why not me? What, what you're capable of, uh, what God created you to be, you're a child of God. I mean, of course you can do that. What are you saying? I, you know, I, I love what you said. I, I have so many notes on my, I'm writing so much down that she's saying, you guys, like it's crazy because you're saying so many truths in one of them that you just said was you ask God, cause you're talking about asking to receive. I want to go bigger. I'm ready to go bigger. And I've never said that. And I am going to get on my knees and because I'm ready to go bigger. I need a new climb right now myself. Yes, my book came out. Okay, great. What's the next thing? But I think asking God to help you with that next right step for you and believing you can get there and that you, Linda said that you are capable because why not you? Look at us. We're no different. Right. We're- doing the same things. We're taking God with us. We're putting him in the center of our world. We're keeping our faith strong. Yes, we have moments. Yes, we have failures. We have struggles. I mean, the list goes on, but the key is is knowing you're capable of achieving, whether it's health, whether it's getting stronger. If you're over 55, yes, ladies, you actually can get stronger in your body, even if you are just starting out. And Linda can speak to that, but it's believing. And I think I'm hearing a lot from you is really the belief that you have in yourself. Nobody can take that away from you. And that's well. That- it also comes from a calling to like, like you've got to, when you're out there in the world, it's so easy to get distracted by Susie Q, no offense to anyone named Susie, Susie Q over here or Shirley Temple over here, or, or as Kathy Savage would say, Tiffany with the big Tony tail, like yeah. you, it's so easy to get distracted by what every, what everybody else is doing by Instagram, by social media, by Facebook, you can be overwhelmed by the time you've gotten off and think I need to do this. I need to do that. Oh, but then what you got to realize is get that clarity, get alone with God, dial in to what is inside of you. Cause there's a gift inside of each and every one of us. Some of us have so many gifts, like I'm just saying, like, so your gift is not my gift, you know, and my gift is not yours. And really dialing in and getting clear about what you're about, what your why is, 
what you love to do. And that way you're not so distracted because you know what your mission is and that keeps you centered. Mm -hmm. And when you're centered and you have a why and a mission, you're only likely to succeed. Like Mm -hmm. it's so much easier Mm -hmm. than when you're trying to hit all these moving targets and they're not even the right one. Right. And it's, you know, blocking out the noise. It, it's very noisy. And I know it I is. get caught up in it myself, you know, as an entrepreneur looking at what, like you said, <laughs> I, I fall into that too, a lot. And it can be very discouraging. So if it happen, if it's happening to you, you're not alone, but you have to get yourself out of that space maybe shut it down a little and focus on yourself and your why. Yeah. Why do I want to be healthy? Why do I want to be stronger? Why do I want to change careers right now? It's never too late, you guys. It's never too late to take that. Never, ever. No. I mean, I mean, seriously, I, I mean, though I wanted a studio, I never, ever imagined the one that I have right now. I never in my wildest dreams, like, it is everything that I ever dreamed of. Like it's more, it's more. God will bless you with more than you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. But I will say there are things that you have like every, I think every I'll call hero or heroine uh, is a journey. You have to face your fears. Absolutely. We all, we all have them. Mm -hmm. We all have them. So whatever you're afraid of, Yes. That to be able to get to that dream, I guarantee you, you're going to have to face those fears. Mm -hmm. I was scared to death to talk. Like, Mm -hmm. can you, I was afraid to speak. I was afraid to do my podcast. I was afraid to compete. I was afraid to, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, of course, business. I I'm going to run a business, you know, and right. Do you identify with that? Like it's, um, it's, uh, but you know what, what happens is If you stay in your head, it's a lot scarier in your head than it actually is in reality. Because now I'm doing something I remember saying uh, when I was in the little studio and this girl was offering me, oh, my husband's renting out this place for X amount a month. I thought, oh, oh, I could never do that. Like for that price. And now I'm like way beyond that. Like in, and I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And then what it makes you realize is, wow. I was dreaming too small all along. I was dreaming way too small. And I think it builds builds confidence in yourself too, is when you take a step and you do succeed and you surprise yourself, you're like, well, I think I can try that. I can do it again. And then you can do it again. And then you can do it again. And the more you keep trying through it all, you'll realize, and it's going to build your confidence along the way whatever it is that you're trying to do. Right. Yes. And God would not call you to something and not give you the tools. And so when he called me to speak, I am going to tell you, I've been terrified of public speaking since I was eight years old. So like at a Christmas play right before it's time to step out, my uh, friend got sick. So they gave me all her lines on top of my lines. And I literally stood there like deer in the headlights and forgot everything. And, you know, I, from that, from that experience, it was like imprinted on my brain. And so when God started calling me to speak, I was like, who, me, God? No, he must be talking to somebody else. Like it was the furthest thing I ever wanted to do. And I tested that sucker out. I tested that out. I just was like, oh, no, I, are you sure, God? Like me, really? Like what? And until I just knew it was, it was, mm-hmm. if he was calling me to do it. Yes. He was going, if there was a reason, mm-hmm. there were people that needed to be helped that was greater than myself. And I could move out of my own way and cross over the bridge of fear and to faith and that he had given me the tools and the resources I need to do what he's calling me to do. Mm-hmm. And that's the way it is. Mm-hmm. That's just the truth of if he's calling you to do something, yes. you're capable of doing it. He wouldn't ask you if you weren't. Exactly. Well, uh, amen. <laughs> amen. A church again. I love it. I love it because it's so much truth 
in that. And right. that's what I try to instill in women's heads that I work with as well. So we are on the same page, you know, to just, I want to flip over though, because I really could talk to you. I say this sometimes, but we really <laughs> could talk and have this be a two hour long, but I do, wanna, I do want to, since you are a fitness expert and you're over 50, I do work with most of my women are at least over 40. They're always asking me their, my best advice, my top meals, my top foods, what's fat burning. Just give my women a little bit of your secrets. <laughs> so, over, over 50 for over 50. Over 50, sure. How do you? Okay. Do I didn't you know are, if that's what you were saying. Yes. Um, like okay. anti-aging secrets in food, a, a, a workout that you love to do any of it? So first and foremost, self-care is self-love. So do not feel guilty or selfish or any of those things for making yourself a priority. Mm. Love. Making yourself a priority because you are the one, you are the, you're, you know, in your household, you're probably the nurturer you're, you're, you're doing all of these things for everyone else. But if you're not taking care of your own self, you're not going to be able to show up in the best way in the best version of yourself with love, with joy. Uh, you know, I, I hate to say it, but feeling good and looking good, they go together. I think it's, it's kind of like this thing, like, yeah, well, we're all beautiful no matter what right? Like God created us in his image. But like, if I am eating a lot of junk food and my waistline is expanding, I'm not feeling, you know, like it's, it's almost like this uh, barometer of, Ooh, cause, cause it's not healthy. right? Right. But also then I'm like, Oh gosh, I can't wear my clothes. Whoa. Where did that come from? You know, like where I'm like, Oh, I, I, you know, I'm not feeling good about myself. So I truly do believe that feeling good and looking good, they go together. Mm -hmm. So when you are recognizing your worth, taking care of your health, I, I just think that that is, is, you know, our gift from God is our body mm -hmm. and taking good care of it. You, you know, not driving it up like it's an old jalopy where the doors are falling off, right. but like it's this, you know, Model T, this, this showpiece, this, this um, amazing, it's amazing all the things your body is capable of. Mm -hmm. So treating it as such, treating it like it's your Lamborghini or whatever car that you wish you had and, and just realizing that it's, it's going to get you where you need to go. So you better take care of it. And then that would be your first thing. And then if you're over 50 and you're feeling like what you are doing is not working anymore, you got to realize that everything has changed. Once you start losing your hormones, once you go, you're getting close to it, or you're going through menopause, then you've got to approach your body in a different way. Maybe you've been driving through workouts and been like, you know, a Nazi on your diet, or you've been forcing, um, you know, forcing like where you're just like, my body will be like this. And all of a sudden your body's like, no, I'm going to be like this <laughs> because you don't have any hormones anymore. And you've got a lot of cortisol. So like when you start getting cortisol, what you have to do when you're in your fifties, you got Secondly, you have to find your stress. Now, you may not recognize it. You may think you're at zero, like I did. I kept telling my fitness coach, oh, it's zero. And then she said, this, this, and this happened, and you gave me a zero. You're not in touch with your reality. So what I would say is what my reality was, I could deal with when I had estrogen, because estrogen helps you with your stress. But once I didn't have that, then it became cortisol. So whatever your stressors are may have not felt stressful before, but now 
they are stress. So my biggest suggestion, um, cause I've completely had, I, I completely had after my accidents, like three, I had a menopause, I'll call it. And I don't now because I found I had to make changes because my body changed. Mm-hmm. So secondly, you have to look at the stress in your life. Mm-hmm. You have to be real about what is causing you stress and you've got to minimize it. Mm-hmm. You got to make sure you're getting, you know, uh, plenty of sleep, uh, not over exercising, uh, that actually at that point, it's a detriment. So getting good weightlifting, um, uh, because your metabolism goes down when you're losing muscle and when you start losing hormones, you definitely got to focus more on the weight training. Yes. So I would say do your cardio, but don't be the cardio bunny that you might've been in your thirties, forties, fifty. you know, like now, yeah. you know, like up to 50 now focus on things that strengthen your body, but don't break your body down because your body, it will be easier for it to break down when you're in your fifties. Mm. So then third, of course, I know these things you hear, but maybe I'm saying it differently today would be, uh, this, when I said the stress, the sleep, because sleep is the biggest way to reduce your cortisol. So if you're getting the menopause belly and you're getting the the fat around the middle, um, you're probably, you, and you're probably not sleeping as well. Make sure you're getting your sleep. Now I take a supplement called well rusted from Menno labs. And it has been a godsend to me because it has everything in it for me to fall asleep, stay asleep. It, it has been a game changer for me because now I am getting the best sleep mm-hmm. and sleep is, is your friend. It is. A it game keeps, changer. yeah, it keeps you, it keeps yeah. you energetic. It keeps yes. you from gaining weight. It keeps you from eating too much and it keeps your cortisol down by 30%. And that's that's a, a lot. Yes, such truth. And these are this is such good advice, ladies, because self care, making yourself a priority, sleep, and checking your cortisol and your stress. I mean, those four things. I think a lot of us tend to just keep going in life. They don't want to face it. They don't want to deal, but yet they're frazzled and they're a mess and they're gaining weight. Again, it's just getting quiet in, in figuring things out for yourself, taking action, doing the things. Well, maybe I recognizing that maybe I'm not sleeping well. And what's causing me not to sleep? Well, there's always something. So find that, out why yeah. is your first step. And just starting small, you don't have to do all those at once. You don't have to go get your nails done, go get a massage, sleep well, <laughs> you know, just do one thing at a time. That's how you will be successful. Oh my gosh. And the last thing then just to give you one more tip, because okay. I could give you, I could give you tips all day okay. for this, for this age bracket, I could give you tips all day. So the next thing would be fasting is a game changer in menopause. Mm. fasting is your friend Mm -hmm. i couldn't agree more i love it embrace it embrace it there's so many different types of fasting we won't go over that today but just know that learning how to fast um and then like well, we could do a whole nother episode on that. Exactly. Because, you know, it's been a game changer for me. And honestly, I'm going to plug myself right now. That is why I created my eight week reset your metabolism program for women, because it teaches you. I, I highly, highly agree with you about the fasting. Maybe not all the time. It's good to change it up a little, but it has changed the way right, I right. manage my own weight along. I'm 40. I'm going to be 48 next week. <laughs> So you look so uh, good. Thank you. But I mean, it has really people say, well, you're just naturally like that. No, I have to work at it just like everybody else. Yes, I work out all the time. But if I start eating like crap, my stomach, it does it things happen. So the fasting aspect really has helped me manage my weight. So I'm not fluctuating up 10, (laughs) down 10. I used to be like a roller coaster. So that is a whole other topic that maybe we'll do in another show. So Linda, this so many great tips 
advice. I mean, the wealth of knowledge that you just brought to the show. I'm truly grateful for you as a friend, as a mentor, as this woman empowerment coach. And I'm just so proud of everything that you're doing. Let me ask you my one of my last questions that I ask all guests is what are you climbing towards right now? Ooh. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. So I am climbing towards doing a cover shoot, Sexy at 60. Wow. Amazing. I can't. Yes. <laughs> That's There's so nothing funny. wrong with it. Embrace yeah. your feminine side. Embrace. And, um, and then um, working on a retreat called the Wild Horses Project for Women. Uh, because I believe, well, you know, we've not felt very free. So I was just kind of dreaming about how can I feel more free? And just this whole thing about, you know, our dreams are not canceled. God is in charge. Right. And this whole thing, this whole vision of like horses came up and I just kind of Googled it. And I found a place where wild horses roam the beach. And I thought, wow, that would just be like such a a freedom feeling of just an, an experience to be in this location mm. to have like a retreat for women, because I think that women are beautiful, just like wild horses when they are free to be themselves. Oh, so yes. kind of working on that. And yeah. that would be something I'm climbing towards. That is a big climb. And I'm wishing you the best with that. I know that God has your back. It's going to be amazing. So if somebody wants to reach out to you in where, where's the best place for them to go? Sisterhood of sweat on Instagram, any social media or sisterhood of sweat.com. Perfect. Oh, Linda, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for all the good advice and greatness that you brought to this conversation and to it, my addicted to the climb followers. So they can just keep climbing in their life, wow. in their health and their faith. And you're just such a blessing. So thank well, you so much. Thank you so much for uh, all that you do, Kelly. And just, I'm excited to watch your climb and all of your achievements And uh, thanks for welcoming me into your tribe today. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode. And if you did, feel free to screenshot it. Tag us both on social. There might be someone just that desperately needs to hear what Linda was talking about today. So we so appreciate you. And until next week, keep on climbing. And I hope that all of our listeners have enjoyed this podcast. And if you guys have really enjoyed this, please review us in iTunes and also share this episode with your friends and your loved ones. Thanks again for listening to the Sisterhood of Sweat. 